do we? I fucking don't. Damn it, they will be on this one. So, mark your calendars for um, June twenty second, which is probably when we get uh, get the get the perspective from Hutano San, where um, where we get to know what they actually talked about. That's gonna be interesting, and we're gonna get a new picture out of that. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure about that. Rainfalls and Love Blooms number 8, by the way, and the rainy season is apparently over, which kind of sucks. Tomorrow on Saturday, June will be over. I've never heard, never had, any use of calendars since becoming a ghost, but this last day of June is an exception for me and Megami, it's a special day. Ah, okay, from, um, such a sense perspective now. It's the day Megami became a ghost and appeared before me, the day my existence as a, as a solitary spirit came to an end, and the day I gained a beloved, adorable sweetheart. The rainy season hadn't ended yet, but the sky was very clear that today. There were a few obnoxious clouds, but the sun still sh still shone throughout the slightly overcast summer sky. The temperature must have been fairly comfortable as well. For the first time in a while, girls were bringing their lunches and liveliness onto the roof. You know, son had come too. It'd been a while since we'd spoken with her like that, and Megumi and I on either side of her. I wonder if Sasa-chan managed, managed to confess. That was the result of our most recent assistance. Umi-chan, Sasa-chan, Nena-chan, the three of the three who are always together. Sasa-chan had been waiting to confess to Umi-chan and she had gotten a perfect opportunity. Yuna-san had succeeding succeeded in holding Nena-chan back to give the two give the two time alone. She had been humble, saying she hadn't done anything herself, but she had certainly tried. And thanks to her efforts, the two of them had left the school, huddled together under one umbrella. I wonder what they spoke about on their way home. I have no idea, of course, since I can't leave the grounds. Though I would have, though I would like to think she did. I saw the three of them today. Uh, that, I saw the three of them on Monday at the beginning of the week. They were all together like usual, of course. I felt something different in Sasa-chan's heart, and amid the captivation she felt for Umi-chan, there was a new sense of security. And she paid even more attention to Umi-chan than before. I could, that, could tell that Sasa-chan would watch carefully whenever Umi-chan said or did something. And I sensed a faint love inside Umi-chan's heart as well. Ah, it's blooming. I could tell Sasa-chan was holding a bit more of her attention too. I hope it goes well for them. Yeah. Yuna-san Yuna -san responded shortly as she ate her lunch. I really do think Yuna-san is working quite hard for us. Listening to the requests of two spirits like like us, the girl who used to eat lunch alone, all alone on the roof, it seemed as though she expected she wouldn't want to do these sorts of things. Yet, after agreeing to help us, she's been thinking and acting much more than the two of us have. Yuna-san herself probably hasn't realized, no, won't admit it, but she, but when she's working to help these girls, there's a, there's a def definite vi vitality to her. Occasionally, she seems to realize that and worry, no waver, hesitate. Her feelings seem to sway. But there are fluctuations in her heart ah, that I have never sensed before when she ate alone on the roof. Never mind. I have to admit I enjoy seeing those changes a little and I wonder what causes Yuna-san to waver like that. I'm a little curious. Hold on. So, m but for who, though? Hmm. I wonder if she tells us about about it at some point. She probably doesn't even know herself. As for Maki-chan and Miki-chan, something seems to have happened between them. Really? Yes. They appear to be working together after school as usual, but they don't go to their hideout out at all anymore. So did they fight or something? Things don't seem to be that bad between them, but they may be in a predicament. It's the same for Kiri-chan and Tsuyuko-sensei. It doesn't seem to be going well for them either. Right. I didn't expect every girl's love story to have a happy ending. Many girls at this school have had their stories end in rejection. I've also watched girls whose relationships never progressed beyond friendship. However, things are different from how they used to be when I could only watch. Now, <clears throat> I can give those girls a little bit more of a push. I can mend some of their misunderstandings. Now we have Yuna-san who can help us accomplish these things. We've also found another girl. Again. <laughs> Yes, a girl who's found love for another girl. This one is a bit of an odd case. I can sense her feelings through the small conversations she has every morning. It's another girl in the same year as you, Yuna-san. Her name is Koba-san. Do you know her? Koba? What, what do you mean Koba-yuka? 
Oh, you know her. Are you friends? You're right. It's Kopa Yuka-chan. Ah, all right. But she's in love with a girl, huh? But... Oh, you already knew. That's right. She runs to school at the very last minute every morning. Also, she can have a brief conversation with the girl in discipline... Discipline... Hold on. There we go. Also, she can have a brief conversation with the girl in the disciplinary committee who stands at the gate. I'm sure I felt love from her during those conversations. Hmm, I see. You know, son seems to know uh, Yuka-chan, but she's quite surprised. I wonder why. It could be surprising to find out someone you know is in love with a girl, though it seems to be a different sort of surprise. I suppose I don't need to inquire about that just now. There's something more important to do today, after all. Why don't we leave it f leave it at that for today, then? Right, Megami? Oh, yes, such son. Megami had left the whole conversation to Yuna, San, and me. She hadn't said a word, but kept her eyes fixed in my direction the whole time. It looked like she had a few things she wanted to say. I know the reason for Megami's disposition, and I knew that it was my fault. I'm sorry, Megami. I wanted to properly apologize to her, and to do that, I wanted to give her something of a gift. Megami. Whoop. I quietly went to Megami's side. Huh? And I embraced her. There was none of her weight on, in my arms, of course, but I tried to emulate a gentle hug. I'm sorry, Megami. It's not that I hadn't realized. I remember about June 30th. Ah. <laughs> it's the day I gained a wonderful partner in love. As such, son. Megami's head shook in my... In my arms, her brown wavy hair swayed, her voice wavered unsteadily. I got a little ahead of myself with Yuna-san because I was excited to have a new friend. I was having so much fun. I was so excited at knowing I'd finally be able to do something for the girls I lo in love at the school. I was so happy to be able to help them with Yuna-san. But it appears as if I've made you uneasy, Megumi. I'm sorry I didn't say anything about tomorrow up until now. such san I was really worried that you might have forgotten such a son. I'm so glad you remembered. I really am. Could you forgive me, Megumi? As an apology, I have a little gift for you. Ah. You know, son, could you? Right. Here you are. You know, opened up a paper, paper bag and that she brought separate from her lunch bag. And she removed from it two delicious looking cupcakes wrapped in clear cellophane and tied with ribbons. They were baked a beautifully golden brown. Ha. This is... I asked Yuna-san to make them for you. It's not something I could make on my own, but I wanted to give you some kind of a gift. Phew, such san Oh, don't cry. Do you like them, Megami? Yes, I'm happy. I'm so happy. I'm glad. I thanked Yuna-san and moved my hand as, a, as if to stroke Megami's hair and keep the tears from her eyes. Thank you, Yuna-san, and I'm sorry you went to all that trouble to bake them for us, but we can't eat them. <laughs> oh, no, I'm... Um, I'll take them home and make an offering of them and then eat them. <laughs> yes, please do. An offering? What? Well, she put them at a household. Would she put them put them at a house household altar? It's not as if I'll as if we'll be able be as if we'll be there. But I suppose I'm happy for the thought. You don't need to help us with anything after school today. Go ahead and take it easy. All right, I will. Please do for this weekend. I'd like to spend it with Megumi after all. Alright. Okay. But I still want a little bit of clearance from uh, from the trio, though. Just a little bit. Oh, I like that. And. Lunch ended and Yuna-san returned to her classroom. Afternoon classes began and ended and the school day came to a close. And after everyone left the school before the sunset... Megami and I wandered all over the school to all the places we could both go together. Holding hands, discussing all sorts of, sorts of things, we reminisced, remin reminisced at each occasion about whether we'd talked about and done there before. And night. The clouds were thicker than they had been at noon, but stars still poked through the, the night sky between them. I was sitting on the bench where Yuna-san usually eats her lunch. Megami's, Megami's head lay on my lap. She was lying on the bench, her eyes closed at ease. Even with Megumi's head against me, I didn't feel its weight. My perch on the bench was... My perch on the bench was its own illusion too. Every so often I could only comb my fingers through Megumi's hair, or pat her head, 
or lay my hand on her shoulder. But it wasn't as if I felt anything. Ah, yeah. I was merely placing my hand on Megumi's hair or head or shoulder and moving my fingers, yet I was sure I felt it. Megumi's body heat, her warmth, the fluffy sensation of her hair. I was sure of the feeling anyway, that the two of us were ghosts, wholly unable to touch, merely holding our bodies close, and none of that mattered. Megumi? I could hear a quiet and steady breathing. Was she sleeping? <laughs> But our bodies are ghostly, so we don't feel fatigue. We shouldn't have felt it, but we still seemed weighed by a sense of contentment and a desire to rest. I wonder if Megumi felt the same way, or if some of the anxiety I caused her had faded and she was instead feeling relaxed. I called her name one once more, my adorable, beloved sweetheart. For causing you so much anxiety. Thanks to Yuna-san, there have been changes occurring in our own quiet relationship. The two of us to be only to only be able to wander to school and observe, but that has definitely changed. I'm happy for the change. I've gained a new friend and there are no long longer days of feeling powerless. Ever since we started helping those girls with Yunasan every day has been fun to me. But that caused Megami anxiety. I'm sorry. It took me so long to notice that you weren't feeling well. I was happy. I still remember it now. She was a girl I only knew by the moment our eyes, our eyes met. She'd suddenly become a spirit, appeared before me and right then confessed her love. And I accepted that, and afterwards, as I spent time with Megumi, I fell more and more in love with her. She's cute and a little jealous, and she loves me with all her might. She works to earn my love for her as well. I find those parts of her charming and precious. Megumi who sleeps on my lap. I want to stay like this forever. I would happily let this moment last for eternity. But I want to touch you more, more certainly. So that the feel of you would remain in my fingers. Because you feel so strongly for me. Because you admire me so much. Because you entrust so much of your heart to me. Megumi. My dear. My love. I want to tell you that I love you more. I want to let you know. I want to be the best lover that I can be to you. But... What? What? The fucking what? No, you don't end that like that. You don't end stuff like that and then what in the f fuck is this? All right, this game just dropped a fucking bombshell. Like what that you don't know no you don't fucking end it like that. Holy fucking bo- and then we are supposed to fucking go- No! <laughs> no, we don't go back to the other girls, we go back to right what fucking happened right there. What in the name of fuck is that? That's like when you watch the show and they drop a bombshell at the end, like what? Not even The Purge has me on edge like- or had me on edge like that. I watched The Purge, by the way, all the movies and I watched obviously the show. And like, and I watched Chernobyl today, as I've told you in the beginning of the session, which is like two part- like four, five or four parts. I'm getting fucking anxious. What in the hell was this ending? This was wholesome and then they fucking did that and the music stopped and then they go back to the cutesy fucking title. Oh, god damn it. Because, you know, the pro problem is that I'm actually going to end the recording and I actually... This, this fucking... Mm. What does that mean? What did that last sentence mean? I do nothing but lie to you. What? Mm -hmm. I don't like it one ding dong damn bit. Houston, we have a problem. I might need to spoil it myself because this is fucking ass. <laughs> like, what the hell, man? And they even stopped the music. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. What the hell, man? 
I was I was a, uh, it was a little bit weird because she's she didn't like she said you know she uh, because she feels so strong for me because she because she because she but she didn't mention her feelings in return. All I do was lie. What does it mean? What the fuck, man? I'm fucking losing my mind here. Ah, Jesus. But yeah, man, my friends, that was <laughs> another session of uh, Kindred Spirits on the Dark ending with a fucking cliffhanger for the ages. Like, what the fuck? I like the fact that... Who is this? Oh, yeah, that was... Okay, that's... Okay, that we get the, the whole... That's the whole student-teacher thing. Right here, we get um, Koba, I think. I think that that's Koba. And here we have... No, here we have Koba, right. So here we have... My troublesome friends. I can't recall who that is, though. But it's the first chapter, so that's a new couple. But I can't really fathom who that is. I thought it was, like, maybe uh, Huta-san. Because there's definitely gonna be Huta-san, because, you know, they sure they were sharing an umbrella right here. But apparently, also, um, maybe she hasn't confessed, but maybe she did a little bit... Because, you know, as Nina said, they are basically, like, more together. Like, she also... Like, also um, such sense said that she was feeling like uh, stuff from Ichika, Ichika san too. Like to, and you know, they pay more attention to each other, so maybe she did a little bit of a hint there. Maybe she didn't go full force. Could be a thing. Um, but yeah, um, that was it for Kindred Spirits on the Roof. Another session. Fucking, I'm gonna record. The, the problem is I'm running out of, um, <laughs> of stuff from Morrowind, and I actually wanted to record that too, but I just realized that I recorded for two hours again. And after that fucking bombshell, I want to know what that fucking last sentence meant. I want some clearance. That whole lying part isn't cool, such son. That is not cool. But okay. Um, yeah, that was it. I'm gonna spoiler myself. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna spoiler myself what that fucking meant, because that's fucking ass. I don't, I don't end on that note. Definitely not. So, um, yeah, but I'm gonna leave you in the in the dark a little bit, obviously. You know, don't spoil yourself, because that's not what you should do, obviously. But that was it for this session of Conrad's Birds on the Roof. Next time, we're gonna take a deeper look into um, My Troublesome Friends, into So It Was Love, and into I'm In Love with the Demon Gate Guard. That's interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, with I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be uh, really into this one, I think, because Koba is a really cool character, really enthusiastic, and you know, the fucking rock and roll, even though I'm obviously for rap, but you know, that's besides the point. You kinda, I, I kinda like the whole energetic part about her, so that's gonna be pretty damn, um, gonna be pretty damn interesting to see what that is all about. Obviously, also, so it was love, where she's constantly running away from, um, from the teacher, and whatever this is, my trouble for some friends won. If we see the character, we're gonna know immediately, though. But yeah, as I said, that was it for um, another recording session of uh, Kindred Spirits on the Roof. Obviously, you know, it airs every Friday. You probably figured that out by now. So I see you all next Friday with the next session of Kindred Spirits on the Roof. Stay safe until then. And um, yeah, see you in the next session. <laughs>